Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel FedEx. In this video, we will talk about the acceleration and frenesary frame of reference. For this purpose, let's start with the components of the acceleration vector in this frame of reference. In figures 1 and 2, we can see the trajectory of a moving particle P, its acceleration vector A, the chosen positive direction, and the unit vectors ut and un of the Fresnes array frame of reference. To represent the vector components of the acceleration vector, we start by drawing two straight lines, the first one being the line of action of vector ut, and the second one passing through the head of vector a and being parallel to ut. Then we draw two other straight lines, the first one being the line of action of vector un, and the second one passing through the head of vector a and being parallel to un. We get a parallelogram having a right angle since ut and un are always perpendicular. This parallelogram is a rectangle of diagonal a and of consecutive sides, the tangential vector component at and the normal vector component an, such that a is equal to at plus an. That is also equal to at ut plus an un, where at and an are respectively the tangential and normal scalar components of vector a. The magnitude of the acceleration vector is as usual given by the square root of the sum of its squared components. Note that, in figure 1, vectors at and ut have the same direction, thus the scalar component at is positive, whereas in figure 2, vectors at and ut have opposite directions, thus the scalar component at is negative, which is not the case for an, since vectors an and un always have the same direction. Therefore, the scalar component an is always positive. Now, what about the formulas which give us at and an? At is the derivative of the algebraic value vs of the velocity. So, it is the second derivative of the curvilinear abscissa s, since vs is the derivative of s. An is equal to Vs squared over R. So, what is R? In the figure, the position at any instant t of the moving particle belongs to a part of the trajectory that an arc of a certain circle can snugly fit with an acceptable amount of precision. R is the radius of this circle, and it is called radius of curvature of the trajectory at the given point. Note that the algebraic value vs squared can be replaced by the magnitude v squared since any squared number is positive. What about the effects of the components at and an? To have an idea about the effect of any one of these two vectors, we will suppose it doesn't exist and see the result. If at equals 0, the derivative of vs is equal to 0. This leads to vs is a constant. But vs is the algebraic value of the velocity, so when it is constant, the motion is uniform. Thus, we can conclude that at affects the magnitude of the velocity. If an equals 0, then vs squared over r is equal to zero. But since we are talking about a moving particle, Vs is different from zero, this leads to R equals to infinity, which means that the trajectory is a straight line. Therefore, the motion is rectilinear. Thus, we can conclude that An affects the direction of the velocity. Note that if A is equal to zero, then at and an are both equal to zero, which means that the motion is uniform and rectilinear.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content.